Okay then my friends, so now we have a generic update action to perform updates to habits and now I want to make a more specific action to toggle the completion of habits. Now, what does this new action need to do exactly? Well, there's two cases we need to deal with really. There's the case whereby a user checks the completion checkbox to complete a habit and then there's the case where a user unchecks the completion checkbox to undo the completion of a habit to uncomplete it if you like and we need to handle both of these cases in this action so let's make the action first of all then we're going to talk about how we're going to handle those two different scenarios let's call the action toggle completion and this time it doesn't need to be asynchronous because we're not going to be directly reaching out to firebase in this action now as an argument to this function we're going to take in the habit that we want to toggle the completion of all right so then, let's think about those two scenarios we mentioned in turn. The first one is where a user checks the checkbox to complete a habit for the day. And when they do that, we want to add today's date into the completions array for that particular habit. Because remember, that's what the completions array is for, to store all of the dates where the habit was completed. And we'll be using that completions array, probably in the next lesson, to work out the current streak. So that's the first scenario. Anyway, when a user checks the checkbox to complete a habit, we add today's date to the completions array for that habit. Now, the second scenario, when they uncheck a box to essentially uncomplete or undo the complete of a habit, we want to remove today's date from the completions array because now they're no longer completing it for this day. They unchecked it. So then, since we'll be working with dates in this action, I'm actually going to install a third party package to format the dates a bit better. And that package is called date FNS and will eventually be storing formatted dates in the completions array. So open up a terminal and to install it, we can type yarn add and then it's date hyphen FNS and just hit enter. So then now let's import a function from this module at the top of the file by saying import and then in curly braces, we want the format function and that comes from the date hyphen FNS package. So the format function allows us to pass in a standard date time value as an argument, as well as a formatting option. And then it formats that date time for us. So let's come down to the toggle completion function and we're going to make a new constant called today. And I'm going to set that equal to format and invoke it. And like I just said, we pass in a date time object as an argument. So we'll say new date and invoke that. And that gets us the date at the point this code runs. And then as a second argument, we pass a formatting option, which is a string. And in our case, it's going to be YY, YY, or lowercase, then a dash, then MM in uppercase, another dash, and then DD in lowercase. And this then formats the date time object as a string where the year comes first, for example, 2024, then the month like 09, and then the day of the month, for example, 15. So this is the format of the dates we'll be storing in the completions array on the habit. But just really quickly, why do we even need to do this? Why not just store the standard date time objects instead? Well, by using this format function, we're actually creating a simplified string version of the date and we're not storing any kind of date object. And that's better for a couple of reasons in our case. First of all, it's more readable this way. If we ever wanted to output a list of the dates for a habit, then they're more easily readable to the user. And second, they're much easier to find in the array this way in case we need to remove them, which we are going to do. So then now we have the date string stored in this today constant. Next, we need to either add this date to the completions or remove it, depending on whether or not it's already in there. OK, then, so let's make an if check to see if the array already contains this date string, because if it does, it means the user already completed it today and they're now unchecking the box to uncomplete it. And therefore, we need to remove it back from that array. So we're going to say inside this if check habit.completions, which is the array of dates, remember. Then we're going to use a method on that called includes and pass in the today value as an argument. So we're seeing if the completions array already includes today's date. If this is the case, we're going to remove today's date from the array by saying habit.completions, again, is equal to habit.completions.filter. 
and then we invoke that filter method. And by the way, this habit that we're working with is the argument passed into this function whenever we invoke it later. Anyway, inside this filter method, we fire a function for each date in the array, and we take that date as an argument for each iteration. And remember, when we use the filter method, we return true to keep the value in the array and false to filter it out. So that means we need to return true for every date which is not equal to today because they then all stay in the array. And then when the dates match, this statement evaluates to false because they're equal and therefore it gets removed from the array or filtered out. So now when a user checks, or rather when a user unchecks the checkbox, then this code block is gonna fire and we remove the date from the completions array. Now we can add an else clause onto this as well to do the opposite, to add today's date to the completions array, because if this is false, then it means the date isn't already in the array. Therefore, it means the user hasn't completed the habit yet and they're checking the box to complete it. And in that case, we need to add today's date to the array for that completion. So let's do this by saying habits.completions and then we're gonna use the push method and invoke it. And as an argument, all we need to do is pass in today, which is the formatted date we have for today. All right, so now we've created the logic to either add or remove today's date from the completions array. The next thing we need to do is actually save these changes to the local state for this habit and also propagate that change to the database too. Now, in the last lesson, we already made an action to update a habit called update habit, which does both of those things. So we just need to invoke that action and pass in the ID of the habit that we're updating, as well as an object containing any updated properties and values. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna say this dot update habit to invoke that function. And as the first argument, I'm gonna pass in the habit dot ID, which is the ID of the habit that we're changing. As the second argument, we pass an object with updated properties. Now the only property we're updating is the completions. So we can add that completions property and for the value it's habit.completions because we update that right here in this function. So this calls that action, it applies any updates locally for the habit but also it saves those changes to the database as well. Awesome, so now we just need to call this action from the list component when we check or uncheck the checkbox. All right, so inside this list component, I'm gonna come down here to the script and I'm just gonna paste in a function called toggle completion. And all this does is take in a habit and then inside that it grabs the habit store and finds this action toggle completion. It passes that habit in as well. So all we need to do is we need to fire this function when we either check or uncheck this input. So we can use the change event to do that. I'm gonna say at changed. So at change like so equal and then toggle completion. And then we just wanna pass in the habit. I always do this. Let me grab that and put it in here. All right, so let's place the habit inside here. And then also I wanna data bind to the checked property. And I'm gonna set that equal to habit.completions. And then I'm gonna see if it includes today. Now, in order to get this today value, I'm gonna to have to import the uh, date FNS library and the format method. So let me do that right here. I'm gonna say import format and it's gonna be from date hyphen FNS. And then down here, we can create the today constant by saying const today is equal to format. And then we're gonna pass in the new date. So right now as the first argument and then the same formatting option four Y's, then double M, uppercase, and then two D's at the end. So we now have access to this today value up here. And all I'm doing is making sure that when we refresh the page, instead of it being unchecked, if it includes today, it's now gonna be checked because this will be true. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm gonna save that, but I'm also going to add in a little bit of conditional styling as well. So. The span up here, is it a span? No, it's a P tag, isn't it, for the habit name? Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do then. Let me grab this and I'm going to create a new span tag inside here and then place this inside the span. All right, so this span tag right here, I'm going to apply a class to and I'm gonna data bind to it. 
and that class is going to be one called line through and I'm going to apply that if habits.completions.includes today. So much like, oops, what's going on here? This doesn't seem to be working. Oh, that's because we need to enclose this in curly braces right here when we're applying these conditional classes like so. Okay, so what we're saying is, look, this span where we output the habit name, I want to apply this class if this statement is true. So habit.completions includes today. So again, when we first refresh the page, if we get the data from Firestore, and for that particular habit, if we look inside the completions array and see that it includes today, then I want you to apply this class. Now inside um, Tailwind, this line through class just puts a line through the text. So it looks like it's been completed, all right? So I think that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's try this out in a browser. All right then, so I've got the app open and we can see these two habits that I previously added. I've also got the Firestore database open and this completions array is currently empty for both of these habits. Now, hopefully in a second, when we check these, we're gonna see that change. So if I click on this, then you can see this is checked. And if we go to the Firestore database, you can see this date was added, awesome. Now also notice this conditional styling is taking effect. Now, when we refresh the page, it's still there and this is still checked. And that's because remember when we first fetch the data and we see that the date right here is included in the completions array, today's date, then we know that it's already been completed for today. So we apply that conditional styling and we start off with this being checked. Now, if I uncheck this, the styling goes away, the date goes away. And if I refresh, now it goes back to default. So it looks like this is all working. Let's check the other document. Yep, that's working as well. Refresh, they're still checked. Awesome.